Amazing God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day, for the sunshine and for a chance to gather together, to hear your word, and to wonder that you would invite us, us to be your friend, to be your children. Lord, open our minds, open our hearts. Let us hear, let us feel. Let us listen and let us love. Amen. Well, there is a, there's a danger that is lurking for all of us who are here in church today. Uh, and not just us, but any who are in church. And that danger isn't something like persecution. It's not something so, uh, so tangible, so, something we can, we can grab hold of. But that danger is actually... That, that it's actually in Jesus' words. If we are those who listen and also live out the words of Jesus, that is a dangerous life. That is a life that can lead to the kind of life that Jesus is talking about in the scripture today. Today's, uh, today's passage is one of those readings where if you listen really closely... I mean, really listen to what, what Jesus is saying and pay attention. They're, they're familiar to us, so our brains kind of go on autopilot. But if we actually sit down and listen and read and pay attention and think about what those words mean and how those words form sentences, and those sentences mean things and thoughts and, 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 and things that, that apply to our lives, if we actually start to listen to what Jesus has to say in our reading today, it's probably going to cross our minds at some point in time that Jesus was a little bit out of his mind. A little bit crazy, if you ask me. Uh, some of what he was saying just seems so far out there that it just seems like, well, maybe he's just a little off. Maybe he had an off day that day. He's just a little, a little weird, right? If we really pay attention, it's hard not to at least at some point think, this seems weird, right? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? In 2011, the year, uh, in 2011, Charlie Sheen thrust himself back into the vernacular and back into the forefront of, of our minds and our pop culture. He had gone, you know, kind of uh, the way of, of, you know, irrelevant um, B or C list, as we might want to say, instead of the A list celebrities. But he thrust himself back into the life limelight and into our, our public eye when he started saying and doing some really weird things. Does anybody remember this a few years? It's been a few years, but now who else? We don't think of any of his movies now, right? It's just we think of that 2011 run that he had that was, a, it was crazy, right? It, it was just odd. Um, and just about everybody agreed that it was crazy, except a few people. One being Charlie, uh, didn't think it was crazy, and then a few of his closest supporters, um, who might have been kind of benefiting from the crazy, or at least on the take of some kind, uh, maybe on his payroll. And so they were just like, no, sounds good, you're exactly right. You've got it all figured out, and the rest of the world thinks you're crazy are the ones who are wrong. And during what he has since uh, referred to uh, as a quote-unquote meltdown period, uh, he was convinced that he was, in his own words, a superhuman. And his catchphrase that became popular that year as he went about life doing things that he thought were awesome uh, and, and living a life that was more like an action movie than it was a real life where just things were nonstop and constant so much awesome stuff happening all the time. Does anybody remember his, his catchphrase? Winning. winning. And you have to stress the G, right? Um, uh, winning. And that was the way he approached his life, was that I am winning at life. For Charlie, winning looked like all the things that your money can buy, and his money can buy, and nonstop partying, just a never-ending long party, no sleep, it was crazy. It was crazy, and even Charlie admits that it was crazy now. But Jesus, too, sounds a little bit crazy here. But Jesus sounds crazy in a different way. 
Because Jesus, instead of, uh, uh, of doing all the things that money could buy, Jesus is just giving away all the things that he has that are valuable. Did you hear what he was giving away? He was healing people for free. He wasn't even charging them. I don't know about you, but I can start to have an understanding of why Judas, the one who betrayed Jesus, got so upset. He was like, Jesus, we got, this is, this is, people want this stuff. We got a product. We got to learn how to market this stuff. We got to learn how to sell it, package it. And we're going we're gonna to take this thing, not just from Jerusalem, and we're going to take it all over the world. This is going to be a global thing. We're going big time here. But Jesus is just giving it away. Free healing. I don't know about you, but now when I go to a doctor's office, it's not exactly free. <laughs> he's giving it away. And then on top of that, he's also just giving people teaching. Just, just willy-nilly, throwing it out to the wind to anybody who gathers around for free. He's not charging admission. I mean, it, it doesn't even tell us that he took up an offering that day. Big mistake. <laughs> And then on top of that, it not only are the things he does, giving this stuff away for free, but the things he says are crazy. Listen to this. He tells us that these ones are blessed. These ones are blessed. The poor, the hungry, those who weep, if you're hated, and if you're excluded, uh, reviled, and defamed, then you're blessed. What? How? Jesus, are you having a Charlie episode? I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that 2011 Charlie would not think that Jesus was living a life that was winning. What Jesus is doing that seems crazy is casting a new vision. A new vision about how the world can be. By living in this way, Jesus is telling the truth. By living in this way, you probably aren't going to get rich. You may not be well fed, and it's not a guarantee that people are going to like you. But Jesus seems to think that all that is a really good thing. Because that is how people treated the prophets of Yahweh, the prophets of the Old Testament, those who called the people back to God. That's what the, the prophets' primary, primary job was, was to bring the people back to God. Say, hey, you're losing your way. This is where you're supposed to be going, over here. This is who is supposed to matter to you. And these are the words that are supposed to guide your life. That work basically excluded them from winning any popularity contests in their day. But they were faithful to God. And their calling they were faithful to. And that is what Jesus is encouraging in his teaching. He's encouraging us to be more concerned with the things of God than with money, fame, or food. Now here in about, oh, 45 minutes or so, food's going to be pretty darn important. Just because people, just because people think you're crazy doesn't necessarily make you like the prophets. It's not exactly, that's not how the equation works. Just because people think you're crazy doesn't mean you're one of the Old Testament prophets. Uh, 2011 Charlie is proof of that, okay? Because um, you could just really be crazy and acting crazy, or you could just, you might just be acting like a jerk. It's very possible. And so it's not just because people don't like you that that means you're, you're somehow living the life that Jesus intended. But a good test is to see uh, what it is that you are living for. What it is you're living for. Who are you serving? Who are you serving? In 2011, Charlie was all about Charlie. It was about Charlie winning. 
sometimes in my life, it gets to be a lot more about me than it does about God. About me winning. About the things that I might have, or want, or desire, or chase after. Are you serving the self, yourself, or are you serving God? That's, a, that's an important caveat that Jesus makes of, of uh, blessed are you for all these things when you suffer all these things for the sake of the Son of Man. Listening to and living out the teachings of Jesus will make you and I, us, look a little crazy. It'll make us look a little off. Here's some of the crazy that I have witnessed by people in this room. And this isn't an extensive list, and I won't name any names. Here's some of the crazy things that I have witnessed in the last year. Here. I have witnessed people taking off a week of work, vacation time, to help with vacation Bible school. Now, although the title says vacation, it's not really vacation. <laughs> Taking off a week of vacation to serve at Vacation Bible School. Seen it right here, folks. I've seen people use some of their summer vacation, the times when, when the uh, when school is out, sometime early June to mid to late August, using some of that summer vacation time to go on a mission trip instead of going again on a vacation or going to Six Flags. I've seen it right here. I've seen people spend two to three or maybe even more days than that Dipping strawberries in chocolate. Selling them on street corners and then giving it away. Giving it away to Child Protective Services of Hayes County. To the tune of roughly $2,600. Just giving the stuff away. Doesn't that seem a little crazy, y'all? I mean, who are they working for? Following Jesus makes you look like you're a little bit out of your mind sometimes. Because you're not living out of your mind. You're living from the heart of God. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we give you thanks for your word, for the ways that you call us back to your heart, God. We ask that you would empower us, embolden us, God. Breathe into us the spirit that we need to live in a way that is out of our mind because we are so set on your heart and your way. God, we ask that you don't allow us to be transformed conformed to, to the pattern of this world, Lord, but rather that you would change us, mold us, and make us into your pattern. Lord, help us to be those who listen to the words of Jesus and live them out. God, we pray for those who are sick, for, for those who are hurting, and those who are in need of healing this day, Lord, that your spirit might fall upon them today, that you, they might feel your presence with them, that you might be with those who are caring for them, nursing them back to health. We lift to you, Lord, these, our sisters, our brothers, our neighbors, our friends, our acquaintances, our co-workers, trusting that you are a God who longs to bring healing and wholeness to the crowds that gathered. Lord, hear us as we pray for your church, for its people, for its leaders. 
We pray for the United Methodist Church. And we ask, Lord, that we might keep our eyes set on you, that we might listen to you, and that we might follow in your ways. That your word might be a light to our path. God, we pray and give you thanks for the gift of the saints who have gone on before, those who have shown us the way to salvation, who have pointed us to Christ. Lord, hear us as we pray. Teach us as we listen. Lead us as we go. From here and to your world. From this church into your kingdom. Amen.